Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if you are new here. My name is Angela and today we're going to be reading some scary Ouija board stories. Now I personally have never used a Ouija board. I've definitely tried to make one on my own and even just like writing it out on a piece of paper was the scariest thing I've ever done. So I don't think I ever need to touch one. I just live vicariously through other people's experiences. And we're going to read a few stories. Stories, and then I'm actually going to share my own personal story that I have with the Ouija board. I know I just said I have never touched a Ouija board. I was not a part of the group using the Ouija board, um, but I vividly remember all of this happening at a birthday party when I was in like third or fourth grade and it was traumatizing and is the reason that I've never touched a Ouija board. And before we get started, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with all of my conspiracy theory, fan fiction, readings, scary Reddit stories and all that kind of good stuff. All of my social media is linked down in the description box below and let's go ahead and get right into it. This first one says, when I was 13, I woke up in the middle of the night in front of my dresser mirror. I was repeating the gift is coming, the gift is coming over and over, which is what woke me up. I talked to my sleep a lot of the time, still do, but had never walked in my sleep before. I thought this was unusual, but was like, oh, well, I guess I was dreaming. I didn't think anything of it hopped back into bed and fell back asleep. A couple of days later, my two friends came over. One of them had a Ouija board, which I had never seen and didn't know anything about. I played on it with one of the girls, but it was dumb and just sort of gave random letters. After a while, I got bored and went into my room while my two friends kept playing. I came out a little while later and my friends were putting the board away. It hadn't been very interesting and they wanted to walk up to Dairy Queen. We were walking up there and I asked if anything happened when they were playing. What were they doing? My friend said they were just asking random questions about our futures, like will Heather get a boyfriend and what will Elizabeth's job be? They said the answers were either gobbly gook, okay, or the planchette moved a bit and then stopped. They said it seemed like a scam. I asked if they asked anything about me. They said they did, just a general question about what does the future hold. They said it did actually spell out a word that time, but it didn't really relate to the question. And after that, they gave up and wanted onion rings. What was the word? I asked. Gift. They said, G-I-F-T. I hadn't told anyone at all about waking up in front of my dresser mirror. I had thought so little of it that I had basically forgotten about it. It was interesting to me that when they told me this, my response was the opposite of what it normally is. I'm a talker and a compulsive storyteller, and something like this would normally be like catnip to me. I typically go around telling everyone about it because it's weird and creepy. But this time, my response was to clam up completely. I just said, oh, and then moved on. I wasn't scared or bothered by it or worried about what they'd think. I didn't go home and obsess about it. I guess I just felt this was something that belonged to me and that I didn't feel like sharing. I'm 53 now and I only told this story for the first time about a year ago here on Reddit. It's popped into my head randomly over the years and I still wonder what it means. Have I gotten the gift? And if so, what was it? What happened? Did I know it or am I still waiting? I don't know. That's so creepy. I'm going to be completely honest. I am absolutely terrified of mirrors. There's just something about them. And obviously there's this super old movie. I feel like it's just called mirrors, but I do not have a single mirror in my room, like my bedroom that I sleep in because I am not trying to wake up in the middle of the night and like see something in my mirror. This one's super short, but it makes me sad and it scares me. So we're going to read it anyways. This one says, years ago, I was bored one night and decided to Ouija. Is Ouija just a verb? I asked if there was anything I needed to know and it spelled out, watch out for canine over and over. It made absolutely no sense until someone poisoned my dog in our own backyard via hamburger with ground glass in it. Whether it was a coincidence or not, it remains one of the creepiest things that happened to me. Dog recovered 100%. Okay, I did not read that part. Thank God. We took her to the vet. She received the care she needed and recovered. I should mention she was a retired police dog and the asshole who poisoned her was a criminal who remembered her from her active duty days. That's the end of the story. But can you imagine being such a shitty person to, first of all, commit a crime, second of all, hold beef with a dog? I mean, me and my dog argue every single day. I don't have beef with him. Ongoing beef. Okay, this one says, I was 12. 
I had a slumber party with maybe four girls. We didn't have a Ouija board, but we had candles and wanted to try a seance. I was a huge Kurt Cobain fan. Oddly enough, this is the second story in this thread that has mentioned Kurt Cobain. Why are you guys trying to contact Kurt Cobain? Let him rest. I was a huge Kurt Cobain fan and thought it would be a great time to see if we could call him up. Why don't you just call Taylor up? What would happen if you just called Taylor up? So we gather hands. I asked if we could contact Kurt Cobain. I didn't really feel any difference in the room. Neither did the rest of us. We were kind of goofing around. The flames would dance a bit or get a bit bigger, but nothing too crazy. Then I asked if anyone is there, raise the flame. Nothing happened until a few minutes later, my mom ran screaming into my room, telling me that the house is on fire and to get out. We all laughed at her, thinking she was listening to what we were doing. We got up and looked outside the room, and sure enough, smoke was bellowing out of the fireplace. We freaked out. I got all of my friends out and told them to run to my grandparents' house. We lived on a farm, and my grandparents' place was in the same yard. I helped get my baby sister and animals out of the house, then went back to try and help my dad put the fire out, but it was too far gone, and we had to just let it go. My family lost everything that night. That's so sad. It never really sat right with me. Clearly, it wasn't Kurt Cobain. It was something dark that we let in. My family had a bad run for years afterwards. I started to mess with the board years later, and again, weird shit has happened. That is absolutely terrifying. First of all, that's so awfully sad that they lost their house in a fire. Um, That is definitely one of my biggest fears. I am always terrified that I didn't turn off the stove or I didn't turn off my straightener or something and the house is just going to burn down. And I live in an apartment complex. So if my apartment burns down, it's not just taking my home down. It's taken like 20 others with me. But I am glad that everyone made it out safe. That's good. Um, but that's also really scary. But also seriously, why is everyone trying to contact Kurt Cobain? This next one says, I had a Parker Brothers version sold at Toys R Us for $13. Ironic. I don't think that was ironic. I think that was probably a marketing ploy. Yes, this kid's game, everyone seems to think of it as. I used it with my mom, the most innocent of creatures who would never play tricks or move it voluntarily. And I tell you, when the planchette started moving on its own, I was already freaked. But I was also entranced to the point of almost addiction. The planchette moved very fast with me and my mom. It would occasionally do gibberish, but it predicted a time when my uncle called. I answered the phone saying, hello, uncle, and he was surprised I knew it was him. That's so creepy. I predicted my basketball team would win by two points, and we did. But the craziest thing is my brother had a friend who liked to mess with it. Still with my mom and I as the players. Okay, this last part of the story doesn't make sense, but essentially they put the cross on the Ouija board, and the planchette literally started to move the cross. Brad kept egging it on, saying, you don't like that, do you? Then the planchette started pushing the cross off the board fiercely. Brad proceeded to draw a cross on the board. It wouldn't do anything until we erased the cross. Needless to say, I decided we should burn the thing after that. First of all, absolutely terrifying. Second of all, I just feel like regardless of if you believe in the afterlife or not, I feel like doing things to egg something like this on is not only like disrespectful, but also like really dangerous because obviously we really don't know what happens like, you know, after we're like, oh. and so like if it is like a troubled ghost, maybe just try to be nice to him. Okay. He's clearly stuck in limbo, stuck in an eternity of hell. Let's just show some respect, okay? And this is the last one we're going to read, and then I'm going to share my Ouija board story with you. This one says, I accidentally stumbled into my Ouija experience and was 100% skeptical until the end. My best friend, Jay, walked into my other friend's house. Typically, we'd head over there to chill or play video games. They happened to be inside attempting to contact someone or something. As soon as me and my friend walked in, our other friend, we'll call him M, stood straight up, turned extremely pale, and ran out of the house to the end of the neighborhood. We chased after him, wondering what the hell was going on. When he got to the end of the neighborhood, he started projectile vomiting. Absolutely not. Nope count me out. And you know, it's not that I am scared of puking. Um, I am scared 
of possessions. And this just screams the exorcist to me. We walked him back to the house and at this point he was not speaking and walking around with a deadpan face. When we got back in the house, M sat crisscross on the corner of the dark dining room, not saying a word for hours. All this time I was complaining about him being dramatic and to cut to the act. 2 a.m. rolls around and I need to head home. I go out and start my car and my windshield is covered in crazy thick fog. Do they maybe mean ice? Because that doesn't make sense. I turned on defrost and waited 10 minutes. Nothing. I decided to pull around the cul-de-sac to be facing the exit. I wait a few more minutes and grab my shirt from my back seat. I got out and wiped the windshield then got back in and wiped the inside. Nothing. After that, I hit my windshield wipers and two perfect handprints dragging across my windshield were uncovered from the fog and everything else remained. Okay, he used the word fog twice, so I'm assuming they mean fog. At this point, my heart sank and I was terrified. I drove home with my head out of my side window so I could see. I was not about to hang around any longer. The following Monday at school, I apologized to M for being a skeptic and asked him why he ran. He said when we opened the door, a six-foot shadowy figure followed us in and he was trying to get away. I still get chills thinking about it. Absolutely not. I just genuinely don't understand how we board experiences just always turn out so evil. And I know that's not the case for every single one. Obviously, there's plenty of times where the Ouija board doesn't work or you, you know, end up contacting somebody that's really nice. One of my favorite creators, her name is Courtney Semple. Um, she goes by CJ's here on YouTube. She had an entire series of her and her friend using the Ouija board to contact a spirit. I think they named the spirit T. I'm pretty sure like T followed her to her new apartment when she moved a few years ago and that was absolutely terrifying. Okay, so when I was in third or fourth grade, I was friends with this girl. We'll call her Mary. She was one of my best friends and I still think about her every single day. Um, she doesn't go by her name that I knew her as in elementary school anymore. So I've tried looking her up and I can't find her anywhere. Um, but her mom actually still lives in my hometown. So anytime I'd go home for the summer, um, I would stop by and see her mom um, and just, you know, see how Mary was doing. But do you guys ever remember having those friends that that like one friend who introduced you to like horror movies or scary stories or ghosts or something like that? Mary was that friend for me. Um, I 100% believe her apartment uh, was absolutely haunted, very demonic. Something just always felt off about that place. And I don't know why. Mary, if you ever see this video, I'm so sorry. I loved your house, though. I loved going over there. Uh, she uh pretty much like bullied her parents into giving her the master bedroom. So she had, I literally remember how big, her, like her room was probably the size of my apartment. Like it was insane. Anyways, so she was that spooky, scary friend that I would always go and hang out with. Um, We would always read scary stories to tell in the dark, that classic book that I just know everybody my age has read at least 10 times because there's no way any of you read it just once. So one year for her birthday, we were having a birthday party and we had a bunch of friends over and we were watching scary movies and telling scary stories and pretending to like ghost hunt outside and we were just having a great time. Well, then someone decided that they wanted to bring out the Ouija board and that was the one thing I'd always told like her and her family, I never want to be around that. My family while I was growing up was very religious, uh, so my mom would not have allowed that anyways, but regardless, somebody said that they wanted to bring out the Ouija board. So me being the rebellious yet terrified child that I was, uh, didn't want to be a part of it, but obviously I was not going to have my mom come pick me up. So they did the Ouija board in the living room and I sat in the dining room and even from a different room, it was absolutely terrifying. Now, this was obviously like Tw like way over 20 years ago. So no, I don't remember any of the questions or anything that were asked, but I just remember the environment of her apartment. And who knows, maybe this is where all of the yucky feelings in her apartment like kind of came from. So we were sitting around the Ouija board asking random questions, whatever. And then at one point, everybody like takes their hands off and the planchette starts moving on its own. I didn't trust her mom to not pull some kind of prank on us. So I was very like, 
well, obviously, like, that's not real. Like, there's got to be magnets or something in it. And then they all put their hands back on. They're all, you know, doing it, whatever. And then they start to say, like, oh, if you are really here, turn off a light. Do this. Do that. And the lights would flicker on and off. Or we would hear some kind of knocking. And her mom was sitting in the living room doing the Ouija board with them the entire time. And I was the only one who didn't want to do the Ouija board. So I was the only one sitting in the dining room by myself. That's literally, that's why I don't have friends to this day. And so literally for the rest of the night and honestly, any other time I went over there, there would just be like random knocking noises and they lived in an apartment complex. So obviously you can chalk the noises up to maybe a neighbor or something like that. But my hometown is definitely more of a like retirement kind of hometown. So there's really not that much action going on in these apartments. A lot of the time your neighbors were like retired elderly people. Um, but anyways, that was absolutely terrifying. Um, and I have never even wanted to touch a Ouija board. That's a lie. I've definitely wanted to use a Ouija board, um, especially after my grandma passed away a few years ago. I'm like, man, I would just do anything to like say hi to my grandma. Um, and who knows? I would love to dive into more like scary things. Britty44, she is one of my YouTube creators that I have watched since whenever she started creating YouTube videos. And I I love her deep dives into like myths and uh, scary games and all that kind of stuff. Obviously, Sam and Colby do that kind of stuff too. But um, I think some of that stuff would be so fun to do like closer to Halloween. Maybe that's something we can look into doing. I don't know about the Ouija board. That one I'm definitely still hesitant on. Anyways, that is all I have for you guys today. Do you guys have any scary Ouija board stories? If you do, definitely leave them down in the comments below because I would love to read them. I swear my phone just loves to show me like the scariest TikToks or like Reddit stories when I'm laying in bed and it's like three in the morning and it's dark and you know any noise is just very scary to you. Anyways all of my social media will be linked in the description box below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Um, it lets me know to keep making videos like this and that is all I have for you guys today and I will see you in the next one.